What's going on, folks? This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. I'm going to get a chart up here quickly in the den for all of you there. All right, let's take a look at what we have going on. Well, quite a week we have in store for us. Obviously, big tech news coming out. Uh, you had McDonald's report today. You had uh, Starbucks tomorrow. All this is going to be interesting. I'm actually looking at McDonald's right now. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, going forward, of course, you have the E-mini up about 0.19%, SPY up about the same. The Russell coming off, but it's had an insane run-up <laughs> the past uh, opens, uh, excuse me, the past few sessions. You have the NQ up about 0.31%, the composite up about 0.21%, and then the Dow futures and the Dow Jones itself are sideways. Gold kind of sideways to the downside, silver, same with copper. And you have crude oil coming down as well, which is super unique, especially at a time where it seems like the tensions, at least in the Levant, are escalating, especially between uh, Israel and Lebanon. The potential for Lebanon to enter in uh, to that conflict, uh, quite insane. Uh, we're seeing crude oil drop in that. But we have a lot of crude uh, in our pipes here in the U.S. To a, to a point, actually, where it might be capping us. We can talk about that a little bit going forward. Of course, Tesla up about 5.21%. A little bit of sell-off down here around July 24th, but we're moving up right now about 0.5, 17%. Still dynamic sideways right now, and that dollar around the 104.54. Of course, you have a lot of news this week regarding the banks. You have the Fed speaking this week, and then I believe you have Japan talking about uh, potential uh, rate increases. Of course, they're dealing with pretty strong inflation right now as well. Uh, you can see the yen getting stronger compared to... Uh, to some other currencies as well, kind of on a expectation that they're going to do that. And of course, you can kind of see some of the bonds, uh, a lot of people, in, and also the capital flow into bonds right now, uh, the potential for rates uh, to come down. Now, I, obviously, rates are not going to probably come down this month at all. Uh, the Fed's most likely going to wait until September. Um, it's interesting, you, you know, to... to kind of think about how this is going to impact everything, right? Obviously, rates are not going to come down to pre-pandemic levels in any capacity. Um, but the Fed has to be really particular about when they lower rates. And Powell has been very vocal about this, making sure that they have the right amount of data, uh, because one of the biggest fears is, you know, lowering them too soon and inflation comes back. And one of the things that I've been talking about is the amount of capital that is just sitting on the sidelines and not doing anything right now. Um, I believe you have something, this is from Financial Times, but this is they're saying it's $9 trillion in private equity. Uh, and this is in cash, which is insane. It Preakin estimated the amount of dry powder, meaning that cash is just sitting on the sidelines at $4 trillion, almost a third of the entire private capital industry's total assets under management. Morgan Stanley analysts reckon the pile of proverbial cash has now grown to about $4.5 trillion, which with leverage means they're sitting on about $9 trillion trillion of buying power uh, and that this will need to be actually invested soon. So time to deploy has extended to roughly three years, the highest since 2013 and above the levels we've seen over the last five years at about 2.4 years to deployment. Given large fundraises in 2020 and 2021, the limited deployment over the last two years, we now see an aging cash pile of private equity uh, that in some cases may begin to no longer generate economics unless deployed. And I think that there will be no better circumstance or better reason to start pulling some of that cash um, than, than when the Fed says we're going to lower rates. And uh, depending on how much gets deployed at that moment, I, I think you could see, you know, a pretty strong rebound or upward movement uh, in the market itself. And I get concerned that, you know, trickling down from there, uh, you know, you, you can run into inflation a few months later. Anyways, it'll be interesting to see. You have some other analysts kind of, you know, saying the same. There's some, you know, actual bank analysts uh, saying the same kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, with that. Let's talk a little bit about On. They had their earnings and uh, phone call earlier today. They're up about 12.4%. Of course, that is another uh, semiconductor company here. You had revenue of $1.7 billion. Let's see, gap gross margin of 45.2, gap operating margin of 22.4, and then gap diluted of about 0.78. They returned $650 million of free cash flow over the last 12 months to shareholders through stock repurchases. Obviously, that is nice for the stockholders themselves. 
You had, let me see here, revenue, of course, 1.735. The gross margin was 45.2% of that. And this is Q2 of 2024. Now, this is less than what you've seen in Q2 of 23 and Q1 of 24. Uh, but again, you know, what we've been seeing a lot of and really how it works, it doesn't necessarily matter what's happening in the quarter being reported, but what that outlook is going to look like. And uh, the outlook is actually relatively optimistic for on. Let me see here. You have a revenue of about 1.7 to 1.8 with a gross margin of 44.3 to 46.3. Uh, obviously, that's kind of, you know, we're in Q2, we're hitting right in the middle of that. Um, but the idea is if you still get a little bit of a juice in the semiconductor market, which I assume that we would, uh, it'll be nice for that company. So yeah, take a look at on semiconductor again, up 12.31%. And then of course we have McDonald's. Let's pull it up here. Now McDonald's had to introduce a loss leader recently with their $5 meal uh, because not a lot of people are buying McDonald's products right now. They have contracted uh, pretty strongly over the past few quarters, and that has to do with inflation, attracting lower income people uh, to buying it, uh, their food. Again, you know, they've had a little bit of a struggle over the past few years trying to figure out where they're fitting in. Now, no doubt they're still the value meal and they're out competing a lot of, you know, the competition. Uh, but you had this weird era where they're trying to drive revenue growth by doing breakfast all day or introducing these kind of craft sandwiches at a premium. And that kind of shows a little bit of confusion, I think, uh, at an upper level. And, of course, now inflation has hit them uh, pretty hard. Now, it's up today on 4.2% because you finally have, you know, the executives sitting there and actually acknowledging the problem and promising to work on it, uh, which is pretty good, especially because a lot of people tend to kind of like neglect this kind of stuff. Let me see if I can get you the numbers uh, for McDonald's as well in a second here. Well, we're going to a break, so stay right there, and we'll be right back. We'll talk a little bit about McDonald's and kind of their outlook going forward. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee, so what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. 